This is going to be a video about the processing of Markarian's chain and M87. Let's begin. We'll load up PIX Insight. And let's open up our LRGB template project. And so, although things have already been integrated, let's go over what was done here. Uh, the scale on local normalization was set to 512. I found that 128 and 500, or excuse me, 128 and 256 scales caused uh, wavy, not wavy, but uh, splotchy patterns in the background. And then for local normalization, um, we had this set, oh, that was turned off. And that was set to 5.5, and that was set to 3. And then both high and low large scale, large scale pixel normalization was turned on. So that's what we were doing there. Uh, let's take a look at the actual integrated images. So you can see here is our red master, our luminance master, the green master, and the blue master. Uh, blue and green had roughly, oh, say, about a little less than an hour's worth of exposures. Uh, red had um, a little more than an hour, and I think uh, luminance had two and a half hours, or a little over two hours, excuse me. Okay, so now we're ready to actually try Murad noise. Let's zoom in here so we can see what's going on. And let's go ahead and tie all those windows. Okay, let's bring up Murray Denoise, and we'll start with the, uh, the red channel. Now the numbers here in the te detector section, I've already figured out. Uh, I'm using the ASI 1600mm Pro camera at gain 76, which is, you know, roughly 2 point, or 2 pixels, maybe 2.2. Uh, electrons per ADU uh, in terms of gain. However, when you scale that to 16 bits as the way it's uh, handled inside of PixInsight, you have to divide that number by 16. So you get this uh, relatively high gain appearing number of 0 0.127 electrons per data number. Gaussian noise came from the flat bias a noise estimator script, I think that's what it's called. And uh, since we have calibrated integrated stacks here, our offset zero. Uh, let's load our variance scale. 
and we'll let it run. Now I'm going to fast forward in the video through this so you don't have to sit through it, even on this relatively fast Mac. This takes quite a long time. If you want to see how long it is, try to pay attention to the uh, uh, PixInsight console log or keep an eye on how the clock changes up there. And we can see what happened here on the red image. Uh, the noise does appear visibly reduced. Okay, now that we've processed red, let's next move to luminance. We'll load the variants and we will run. Okay, luminance has finished. You can see it's visibly reduced in noise and it doesn't really appear to have hurt the detail any. Let's next go to the green channel. Okay, now let's do our blue channel. Okay, we have our images noise reduced. Now let's go on to the next step, which will be cropping. Let's make all our windows large. And let's make everything a little bit neater. Okay. Let's go ahead and expand that. And uh, where is our luminance? There we go. Let's bring up dynamic crop. And I think, I think that looks like the framing that I want to use. So let's go ahead and uh, save that there. And we'll go ahead and apply that one. Let's close that. And we'll apply it there. And we will apply it there. And we will apply it there. And let's go ahead and rename this. Just in case we need to back up and come back and do that later. Put that over there. So now that we've done with cropping, we'll move on to the next step. And remove our gradients. So let's click that to resize our samples. And you can see if you look at the uh, upper right hand part of the picture, we're missing samples there. So I will increase the tolerance and I'm actually going to decrease the samples per row down to six on the theory that uh, gradients are, are very large scale structures. And so we shouldn't need too many samples to accurately model those. So let's generate 
some samples. Looks like we've covered most of the screen pretty well. Let's see if we have anything that looks like it's sitting on an obviously bad spot. I'm going to move that up here just to get it away from any potential uh, galaxy fringe there. And as well with that and that and that. Same up here with this one. And I'm going to see if we can put a sample there. Um, now let's go back to the beginning here and look to see if any of our samples are in a bad spot. Oh, it's back up there. That sample looks like it's perhaps sitting on a star, so let's move that a little bit. And where are you? Okay. Okay, that looks like all of our samples. We're going to uh, come down here and save this for the other channels. And for now, let's just look at our, our model. And here, come back here, and bring you back. And if we look at our image, that looks like a pretty good model of our gradient. So let's come back up and do subtraction, and this time we'll do that because we did, we've already looked at the model, and um, for our purposes today, we only need to, to do this in place. We don't need a separate copy. So let's take a look at how that did. You can see the, the background looks a little cruddy after what uh, Mire de Nois did to it, but overall this looks pretty flat across the background. So let's move on from red. And look at our luminance. We should have a pretty similar gradient here. Indeed. So let's go ahead and that. Okay. And our green. Again, a very similar gradient. And actually, this kind of makes sense when I think about it. Um, in the uh, orientation of the camera, when I shot it, the uh, arc of Markarian's chain was at the top of the frame, and um, that would have been down here on the uh, on the model, and that was in the higher part of the sky, and this was in the lower part of the sky. So, I think. I think that makes sense for the way the gradient's looking on this image. Okay. 
that kind of looks particularly disgusting back there on the green channel. I hope that doesn't come back to haunt us. And our blue, which looks like it should behave similarly. Yeah, let's go ahead and apply that. That looks pretty hideous in the background too. Now green and blue are the channels where we have the least amount of data, so perhaps that's why Murray Denoise left the background looking particularly disgusting. So we'll see what happens in a bit. Uh, this is going to be, uh, this is not a, a rigged demo. I'll be trying this for the first time as well. Now that we have our masters cropped and uh, gradient removed, uh, let's put together uh, RGB components. So we have the red. green and the blue and that looks totally hideous but that looks a little bit better our background does look particularly disgusting so We'll see what happens here when we actually go to, to do a, an actual stretch. Hopefully that won't be too bad. Uh, let's do photometric color calibration on this now. Um, M87 is that galaxy at the top. That should be close enough for us to plate solve with. And uh, I've done this for previous iterations of this image before I had all the data uh, with average spiral galaxy. Uh, but let's try elliptical galaxy because we have several ellipticals in here. And um, I, I'm curious if that'll make any difference compared to what I saw before. So we'll let this run. Okay, we have our graph, which honestly, I'm not entirely sure how to interpret, other than that I'm assuming that the scatter of our points being along that line and along that line are actually a good thing um, that says our, our data uh, was pretty well matched. So let's go ahead and link our channels now that we're calibrated and restretch and there we have it. So now that we have an RGB master, let's go ahead and change that. And we'll move on to uh, stretching for LRGB combination. Okay, so let's send this image to our nonlinear workspace along with the luminance channel and let's begin to stretch. Zoom in here.
Okay, I'm. This is my first LRGB image, um, so I don't have a lot of experience with how much stretch to apply here, but I'm going to leave this like this before the background becomes too obvious uh, in the hopes that when we combine with the luminance image, um, we don't get too much crud in the background. Uh, I don't know, we may have to come back and, and revisit this, but for now, let's go ahead and apply that. And let's bring up our luminance and begin stretching that. Sorry, I forgot to link that to the active view. All right, why is our, because I did not bring the preview back. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's back that off a little bit. Right, there is our luminance. So we have the luminance and the RGB, which does not appear to have too much color in it, but let's see what happens. So we have our LRGB combination. Let's put our luminance in there. And let's just do an initial combination to see. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's zoom in. The noise does not look too bad, a little bit of modeling in the background, but hopefully we can suppress that a bit. Let's back that up one and let's see if we can bring some color out. So let's go to an extreme here and see what that does. That gives us definitely a little more color. Let's uh, zoom in here and look, but it also brings out some color noise. But uh, maybe that was a little too much, but wow, we're actually getting some detail in those galaxies, which I did not expect. Let's, uh, let's back that off again and maybe try point two and maybe some uh, luminance reduction come back here. I'm sorry, chrominance noise reduction. I think I said luminance reduction before, which was complete nonsense. Wow. I 
I think this is going to be something we can work with. Yeah. All right, let's uh, get him out of the way. Now if we look at our background here, Looks like it's pretty neutral. I don't think we have a need to do something like SCNR. So let's build a mask. And we may as well use our luminance that we stretched as a starting point for the mask. So let's bring up um, an orange mask there. But let's try that range selection. that up a little bit. Let's see if that makes a decent mask. Okay, we'll give that a try purposes of trying to do a local histogram equalization, we're going to want to make uh, a starless mask. So let's make another copy of that. And something that I learned from another tutorial there's a quick and dirty way that might be able to make a decent mask here. Just set the number of layers to five and turn off the residual layer and apply that to our copy. And lo and behold, pretty much everything but the stars disappear. So, or everything except for the stars disappear, excuse me. So let's call that stars. And we have our mask. And let's try some pixel now. So our target's going to be stars. And that was not great. So we're going to uh, stop there for a moment and ponder this. Let's get that out of the way for a moment. And that I 
let's uh yeah okay this i think we left a little bit too much in there so let's undo that and let's bring back multi-scale linear transform and instead of five layers let's do four still have some in there how about three I'm not sure how this is going to work. Let's back that up. And actually, let's make a copy of that and let's put that up there for later use. Uh, the reason that I want to do that is I want to mask with and without the uh, galaxies in it. Or sorry, with and without the stars in it. Now a lot of these stars are actually galaxies that are just very small, but for all practical purposes they're stars and probably don't want to do too much processing to them. Failed. Oh, yeah. Well, let's go ahead and rename this back to stars. And we'll try that again. All right, that still leaves a lot of stuff there. Let's see what we can do with histogram transformation on this. I don't know whether this is going to work, but we're going to find out. So I'm calling that LHG mask because we're going to use it with local histogram equalization. Although I like that mask better. You know what? I just had an idea. Let's bring back our multi-scale linear transform. And 
sorry. Let's try getting rid of the first three layers. Did that do anything? Okay, that got rid of a few of the smallest things. Let's increase the layers and try again. And let's see what happens when we just keep that one. Yeah, I think that's what we're going for here. Let's get rid of that one. So we have that. We have that. Oh, yeah. I don't think we're going to need that anymore. Okay. Let's bring this up and uh, let's call this LRGB now. Okay, so that's going to leave just the, uh, the biggest galaxies and uh, the bigger, smaller galaxies around for processing. So let's not show the mask and let's bring up local histogram equalization and uh, let's start around 35 and 0.5 and then we'll try that and see So that looks just a little too crunchy to me around here. I think, as my grandmother would have said, that's a too much. So let's raise that and see what happens. And maybe drop that a little bit. Yeah. That looks a little better. I wish we could zoom in on the preview. Let's see if we can get that and that together. I can't really tell. Let's try it and see. I have a feeling we may back that off a little bit. Okay, let's take a look here and see what we did. So this is with LHE right now. And that's without. That's actually looking pretty subtle. You can see a small effect. but it's pretty subtle. I think I'm okay with that. 
And these are basically very fuzzy, distant galaxies. <clears throat> I want them to feel like they're fuzzy and not crunchy at the edges. Okay, so we've done our local histogram equalization. I think the only other thing I want to do is work on some contrast and saturation. So let's bring back this range mask. And the reason that I want this is so that we can work on the foreground and the background separately. Um, so let's apply that mask. And let's show it so we can see what we've got. So you can see we're capturing a lot more of the smaller objects now. And, uh, but first I want to work on the background. So let's invert that mask. And uh, let's bring up curves. Okay. So I'm not going to do an S curve here because we've masked out the foreground. I just want to bring down the background without affecting the foreground too much. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting my previews. Whoa, did not grab my control point. So you can see, I can bring that down a little bit without it really uh, affecting the um, the levels on the uh, on the stars and galaxies. And so it helps separate them a little bit more without causing any um, edge artifacts around the galaxy or, or you know, causing any of the foreground objects to, to get darker. So let's, uh, I think that looks good. Let's go ahead and apply that. And let's reset there. Let's see what that did to our background, about 0.1. Yeah, I think that looks okay. So now let's invert our mask again so that we're only operating on the foreground now. And let's see what we can do with saturation. And, and the reason I don't want to do this to the background is I don't want to add any color to the background if I can avoid it. So by uh, working on just the foreground objects, we can hopefully add some color to them without really doing anything harmful to the background. And maybe we can be a little more aggressive with the foreground because of that. I'm not sure there's a lot of color here to be had, to be honest. But uh, there's kind of an extreme case, which is clearly too much. Well, maybe there. Got a little bit of color there and there. Well, let's even maybe a hint of a little bit of structure there. Let's do some before and after here. Before, after, before, after. So we definitely got a little bit of color there. Let's come in and take a closer look. Before, after, before, after. 
I, I think, I think I like that. So, let's see. I have a previous version of this image uh, that I did on uh, a couple of days ago. Um, let's compare. And that would be That one. So the differences between these two versions. This one was done a couple of days ago. This one was done just now. And this has a slightly blacker sky. The foreground objects are made a little bit brighter, but it's it just looks too processed to me. Well, let's blow that up to an equivalent size. The background, now, now the difference is in the way this was processed. This one did not have murated denoise. Um, it, I actually don't recall whether I did local normalization on this or not. I don't think I did. Um, and uh, I probably was a little more aggressive with LHE, and I did some other noise processing. I think this certainly looks smoother, um, visibly smoother, thanks to Murray de noise, and, and probably not pushing the stretch quite as hard. I think the color feels a little more natural I don't know, even though even though that's not saying we're particularly green, I feel like I want to do this. So let's see what happens. Yeah, I think I think that does it. Uh, there are other things we could try to do. Um, you know what? I did that through the mask. Hold on. Let's undo that. And let's uh, disable our mask for the moment. All right, let's try that one more time. Okay, off, on, off, on. That's a very subtle difference. Let's zoom in here a little more closely. Off, on, off, on. Honestly, I'm not seeing much difference one way or the other. But I, even though the difference is subtle and it may not be visible in the video at all, I'm going to leave that in. So there we have it. Let's do one last possible tweak. 
Let's show the mask. Let's invert that again. And let's just look at curves a bit. Just trying to see if I want to darken the background just a tiny bit more. And of course, bring up the preview. Hello. Oh, because I'm doing saturation. Reset. Okay, not a rigged demo. See, if I go too far, the, sep the, uh, the division between the galaxies and the the background becomes too artificial. So we need to leave a good blending between the two. We don't want the background to be too artificially dark. For the moment, let's take off that mask. And do an S curve. Let's take a look. Before, after, before, after, I think after. And if we compare that, I think I like that new one even better. Okay, Novak, there you have it. My take on Markarian's chain and M87.